What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to our Moon Knight after show discussion. We're talking about the third episode, which was titled The Friendly Type. A very interesting episode, a conversation amongst the gods. Kanju gets locked up in an imprisonment. We have a third identity on the mix and so much good juiciness and some action. You know, I've been calling for some action and we got that action this episode. I'm so excited to be talking about it with you all. And of course, my amazing co-host on today's live discussion. If you tune in for the first time, welcome to the channel. We uh, we do this every Wednesday around 5 p.m. Central Time, where we break down the latest episode of Moon Knight. We've been doing it for the last year with the other Marvel shows, and uh, so excited to be doing this every Wednesday. Uh, and, and occasionally, we have some topics to talk about, but today is just all Moon Knight centric. Moon Knight episode three that we'll be diving deep to, diving deep into spoilers, predictions, theories, and so on and so forth. So I'm so excited to be back again. If you're watching this live, we appreciate you. If you can do me a favor, that little thumbs up, go ahead and press that button. Uh, me and Kanju would really appreciate it, as well as. Uh, uh, have some uh, throw your predictions, your theories, your favorite moments, least favorite moments, and all this stuff in the live chat. And of course, shout out to the replay game. If you all can do the same, that'll be greatly appreciated. So, with all that being said, let me bring in my weekly amazing co host, starting off with the man representing the East Coast. He keeps me up to date with all the great shows, especially on Netflix. And he's just a great individual in uh, all in all. Talking about the one and only Chris from Taste Take. What's going on, my man? What up? What up? What up? What up? What up, what up, what up? Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, bro. It is. Uh, it just seems like the time flies, man. I don't know if Kanju manipulates time too with the moon and just spinning things yes, around. We're back. Two thousand years earlier, I feel a little younger. <laughs> I hear you, man. It's always good to see you and Amanda, man. I'm excited to talk about this third episode, get you guys' thoughts, because we haven't conversed about this third episode. I don't know if Chris loved it, if he hated it, if he's just done with the show, or he wants to buy a Kanju t-shirt and, you know, go to Egypt and see if he can find some tombs. I don't know if that's how he's feeling after this third episode. But we're going to find out. We're going to find out, ladies and gentlemen. But Chris, if this is the first time people are tuning in and they are uh, like, this dude looks cool. He got some swag. It seems pretty awesome. <laughs> what is he about? Where can I find him? Why don't you let the people know, my friend? Look, if y'all think that, shout out to you. But yeah, my name is Chris Tate. I represent Tate's Take here on YouTube. Um, I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, try to give you a little bit of background on the content. And then just let you, let you know if I think it's worth checking out or not. So if you're into that, that kind of thing, you can find my information in the bio. Um, I know I'm, I see some familiar faces in the chat, so uh, we're going to get it popping. Yes, we will, ladies and gentlemen. Again, check them out. And Chris, I know you got a uh, there was a new show on, on Netflix, right? Is, is it already out, or cause is it the ultimatum? I know you were talking about it a couple weeks ago. Is that is that the big talk of town right now on Netflix? The ultimatum is the big talk of town. It's the same yeah. creators of the well, the dude named Chris actually is uh, he made Married at First Sight and he made Love Is Blind. And now he made the ultimatum. So um, it's got the internet in a buzz because yeah. you know how people go with dating shows. <laughs> they love it. But yeah, one person in the relationship wants to get married. The other person is not ready. So yeah. of course, what do you do? What do you, you don't do? talk put it out. TV. <laughs> you, you put them on TV, of course, of course. So um, I've been covering that on, on the channel. You guys can check that out. That finished today, actually. The finale and the reunion was today. So nice. um, if you're into that show, you can watch my stuff. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely check it out. I remember I used to watch uh, back in my drama shows with VH1, MTV, uh, Marriage at First Sight. That show was like so hilarious. I remember this one couple. Chantel, Chantel, Chantel. Oh, she is from Atlanta. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> My boy actually randomly, because she's she's like a nurse or something. They work in yeah. the same hospital or at work no in the same way. hospital at some point. I was like, yo, this is crazy. Get the autograph. Small world, man. Small world. But guys, check yeah. out Chris at Taste Take. Great content creator. Great guy. Definitely do yourself a favor and subscribe to his channel. And last but certainly not least, our second co-host who's representing up north. I, I, I love her MCU takes. She has some hot ones. She has some great things to offer to the table regarding just what's going on in the world of media for movies and shows. And just a great person overall. I'm so excited to have her back talking about this third episode. I'm talking about the one and only Amanda. What up? What up? Hey, oh, happy to be back as per usual. You know, Wednesday, happy Wednesday. Wednesday. I happy know. Wednesday. Yeah. How are we doing out there? How's your day going? Good, good. I actually got my very first tattoo ever this <gasps> oh, morning. Say what? Yeah, it's an event, like an eventful day. Yeah. Today, did you? So. I didn't even because I, you know, obviously we follow each other on yeah. social media. Did you post is it? Is it Ant Man? 
I know it's not Ant-Man. Well, like, could you even see it if it was Ant-Man? I'm going to pull true, that card. True. It could have been, been giant Ant-Man. <laughs> it could yeah. have been. Imagine your whole back my whole back. Oh, my God. But yeah, I didn't post it yet. But uh, it's a little quote from the Irishman. So I was nice. really Oh, tough, uh, tough, 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 tough. That's what's yeah. up. I'm excited to see it. I mean, yeah, I, is this is one of you. many. I'm going to see you next week. going to have a full sleeve. going to have oh. uh, oh. you know, Joker tattoos on the phone. <laughs> and damaged on the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah i don't know I, I like it it didn't hurt which is yeah. good so yeah i'm, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it yeah i'll send she's it to you guys awesome well you heard it here guys amanda straight up she's she's gang gang she got the whole tattoo she's a part of it. we're gonna see her next week she'll be tatted up but amanda why well, so glad to have you back why don't you let the fine folks at home know where they can find your awesome content on the interwebs yeah of course you guys can always follow me over at amx nda reviews on twitter instagram and letterbox you can check out my website candidxcinema.com and my youtube candid cinema i have my moon Knight episode three review up right now and uh, i will have my secrets of dumbledore movie review either thursday night or friday so it's all about TV content, movie content, and then some kind of like thirst tweets because of Oscar Isaac on Twitter. So come join. <laughs> was it did I read that right? Did Pedro Pascal like comment on the whole daddy yes, thing of, of the uh, the yeah. webs? Those yeah. guys are great. It's so a shame that we've they've only been in one product together. Uh, right. What was the name of that movie? On Triple Netflix? Frontier. Triple Frontier, which is Affleck, <laughs> Oscar yeah. Isaac, Pedro Pascal. Whole game. It was an okay film. Did you get a chance to see that, Chris? I don't even remember. No, I'm about to put up right now. <laughs> was it 2019? Oh, it was a Netflix movie. Nah, I didn't see yeah, it. Yeah, I, I feel like it was like 2019, what? like March. It was, it's 2019. 2019, yeah. gotcha. It was a, I mean, it was 2019 okay. was too hot, yo. Know, like, and yeah. that was before I did YouTube anyway, but the, 2019 was too hot for movies. It, was, it had every good movie in the history of life. And I think like yeah. Extraction came out not too long before that, and it felt like the yeah. same. Pretty much the same kind of mercenary story, <laughs> but did. hopefully we get more of them. I mean, he's you know obviously we got him Mandalorian. I don't know if Mandalorian and you know maybe uh, uh, Poe Dameron come. I don't know. I don't even know if Oscar Isaac was want to come back to Star Wars after all that craziness. But either way, before we get into tonight's discussion, you know we always like to catch up and see what we've been watching and any recommendations. Chris, man, start with you. Any dope shows cool movies you caught up on the new movies you recently got a chance to see that you want to let the people know is worth uh checking out hmm. okay 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 <laughs> we did we talked about ultimatum already that's just like yep. if you just like the reality garbage of course like you know who you are but right. i'm not a, you shouldn't be ashamed you should be who you are yeah so that's that's out on netflix that that is 100 mm -hmm. out already what i did also watch on hulu was season two of woke and it's oh, one of those yeah. shows where like no one is talking about it and it's not epic and maybe people like, it doesn't require all this talk about it but if you enjoyed the first season of woke and y'all know the woke is with um, a man from new girl mm -hmm. um I forget his name um but also, he's hilarious also so. yeah also my man from um from workaholics one of my favorite shows um oh, i'm a man so, blake yeah, yeah 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 of course of course blake so that's that's that, that, that just came out on um on Hulu not long ago. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I'm watching Atlanta, catching, going through that. And what I need to watch, I know you talked, you've been talking about it, is Severance. So I definitely got to get on Severance. And that's that's, yeah. that's probably going to be my weekend homework. I think I might have a weekend yeah. of just playing catch up. But those yeah. are the things that I've, that I've been watching. Anatomy of a Scandal is a, is a show that's the last thing I'll touch on. Anatomy of mm -hmm. a Scandal is a, is a British show we touched on a little bit last week. But that, that comes out on Friday on Netflix and that's only a limited series. So it's like only six episodes. It goes really quick. But if you're into like that legal type of stuff, it's like a, but it's, this guy is like a high up person in politics in, uh, in London and gets accused of, of rape. You know how those go. Mm. So it's, it's like, wow. it's like he say, she say type of thing, but like really dope mm. British cast, really good, like well acted based on a book, best on the book probably. Um, and yeah, it comes out on Friday, Netflix. There you go. You heard it here first. There's a taste, a Chris taste take take on what to watch this week. Uh, it's all sent to you, Amanda. Any any new shows or movie? I know you mentioned um, the Fantastic Beast three, which I've heard yeah. some good things for the most part. Mm -hmm. I know you got a review coming seems up. Seems mixed. Seems mixed. Yeah, it seems pretty mixed. Yeah. But I, it seems like it's a lot better than the second from what I heard. But any <laughs> any new shows on the, on the horizon or movies that you got a chance to check up on that you recommend to the fine folks out there? So because I've been re-watching season two of Bridgerton like on loop, my Netflix algorithm <laughs> is kind of like <laughs> Jonathan Bailey 24-7. So nice, I ended up nice. watching um, 
It's called Crashing. It's a UK show, but it's a Netflix series, Sounds and it was familiar. created by Phoebe Waller Bridge. Who so did you're, you're probably you're probably thinking of Crashing from HBO, which was like the dude was yeah. crashing on the guy's couch. You're probably thinking of that one, Elliot. Yeah. Gotcha. Because gotcha. I googled both of them, like, why is there another one? And yeah, mm-hmm. but I'm obsessed with her it. from Fleabag, though. So I'm listening. Go so on. I love her. She's it's awesome. so good. So they're in like um like an like an apartment complex, and they're all living together. But there's couples. There's like an old like flame that comes back from one guy who's trying to like get like proposed to his like girlfriend, and then she comes back, and then she gets in the middle of it and meddles and. It's just really, really funny and different. These characters, like they're such a mixed bag and it's a lot of fun. It's only six episodes, half an hour Ooh, perfect. episodes. Perfect. One, nice. Literally once, one sitting. I sat down from like, I guess seven o'clock. I'm like, you know what? Let me watch it. Mm-hmm. Really fun watch. And it just sucks because it ends on a cliffhanger and there's mm-hmm. no confirmation for a season two. Perfect. But Jonathan yeah. Bailey is an absolute dull <laughs> yeah. in crashing. So I finished that and then I started watching Dollface on um I think it's on Hulu, but it's on HBO for me here. On oh, Grave. uh, uh Homegirl from Thor, right? I can't yeah, Kat name. Dennings is Kat in Dennings, it. Yeah. yeah, she's in it. Um, Brenda Song's in it, mm. Shane Mitchell's in it. Mm-hmm. It's more mm-hmm. of like there's feminine energy. She just mm-hmm. broke up with her five-year-old five-year-old no i have a five-year relationship with her boyfriend my bad sorry <laughs> i can't speak today but it's all about like just reconnecting with friendships mm. real feminine energy which i i always like lean towards sometimes when i feel like i'm lacking so i turn to shows um yeah but margot robbie's executive producer on that one too Ooh. so i give i gave it a go but yeah it's it's fun if if there's like girl time that you need then definitely check out dollface it's pretty good nice some great what do we think speak. about what do we think about phoebe so speaking of phoebe mm-hmm. leaving yeah. the uh the me the mr and mrs smith with uh with oh, uh, sure. yeah with donald glover that that was like a match made in heaven hopefully they can work on something in the future but i'll because it seemed like it was like yeah. differences over where they were going so we're like gonna go with it yeah because i trust her more than him even though i trust him but then I'm like, <laughs> was he is he taking it to the wrong place and then she's like look Maybe. bro like this Hey, I mean, this would be the second pro- – well, the Deadpool thing that uh, Donald Glover was going to create didn't get off the ground, so I don't know. And I right. think his team that he has, him and his brother and everyone in Atlanta, they they, they just have such good synergy. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I definitely – Phoebe, she's fantastic. I mean, the work yeah. she's done on TV, even more recently in, in movies now with, you know, being – I think she was co-writer of, of the most recent 007 film and a couple other projects in the work. So, I don't know. I, hopefully, they can maybe work on something in the future, but that would have been fire them two yeah. working together and they were going to start and it was going to be them starting it as well mm-hmm. yeah they ah, replaced the, they replaced her this week or last week i forgot who they who they put but i saw that it came out it um, was the girl put. from pen 15 i think i don't forgot her name mm, but it's 15. the lead in pen 15 okay. yeah i think it's a web series yeah. well, hopefully they can they can find something to collab on in the future but uh speaking of donald glover yeah Lana, i know you mentioned Lana earlier because that's something i always recommend if you guys are fans of uh comedy but also like really thought provoking social commentary. Uh, social commentary in today's society. They do such a great job of balancing out the two. So that's been great. Um, what else have we been watching recently? Northman. I know, uh, you know, a lot of people have been talking about that. I got a chance to see that. Uh, I think it was last week and the reviews up now. Woo. Man, and Chris, if you guys are into stories of vengeance and, and Vikings and Norse mythology and Anya Taylor joy being a beast. Yeah. <laughs> It's great. It's Robert Eggers. If you, if he's your your type of uh, a taste in movies, I think you guys will have a good time with that. One. I really enjoyed that. And uh, what else did I watch this week? Uh, oh, to, not tomorrow, Friday. There is an Amazon Prime show by the name of Outer Range, uh, starring mm-hmm. Josh Brolin, um, Lily Taylor. Who else is in there? Tom Pelfrey for those Ozark fans out there. Season three, uh, who played Ben, uh, and a couple other great, fantastic casting. Essentially, the premise is Josh Brolin is the owner of a uh, cattle ranch in Wyoming, and you know he's doing his thing. There's some domestic drama stuff going on, like he has a missing daughter-in-law that's on the on the missing. It's like they don't know if she's dead or alive. There's some other stuff about the budding uh, people across the way trying to buy his land. But mm-hmm. then it's a big, gigantic space, like void of a hole in the middle of his farm. So as you would imagine, there's some supernatural sci-fi elements going on as well. Mm-hmm. So it is uh, the first two episodes drop yes. on Friday, yes, and yes, it yes, is. Yes, yes, yes. 
I did Ooh. see that. I did see that. It it's like the uh, sci fi Yellowstone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yellowstone. I know some people mentioned it was another show that people wanted me to watch from, I think it was on, on Epics. Uh, and it, some people say it's, it has some of those shades of that. But I think it's a mixture of kind of like The Leftovers meets Lost meets Twin Peaks. It's just two episodes yeah. in. It is great. Image and Poots is in it. It's really good, guys. If you have Amazon mm -hmm. Prime, I highly recommend uh, putting that on the watch list for this summer Friday. So nice. There's some good stuff coming out, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. We're just in March or April, and there's so many more shows. Barry comes back later this month, and uh, it's I don't know where the time. It's just we need more hours in a day to watch all mm -hmm. this great content. Yeah. But speaking of great content, Chris and Amanda, Moon Knight. Moon Knight episode three, titled The Fr the Friendly Type. And also, everyone at home, let us know what you've been watching, favorite shows, stuff you've been recommending. But let's talk some Moon Knight. Chris, man, I know I mentioned last week, Indiana Jones meets the mummy vibes. Did it work for you, man? Or was it just kind of like, oh, okay. To me, this episode was kind of like, uh, okay. Like, it wasn't whack. I, I wasn't like, oh, this is boring or this is whack. It, it, mm -hmm. didn't, it didn't, like, push the envelope. Uh, we're going to go through. I'm, I got some favorite parts. And I got some whack parts, so I'll, I'll get into it when we get into it. But overall, my my opinion is that it was kind of eh. But mm. based on the internet, I know a lot of you guys have watched the first four. Mm. I think that I think a lot of the internet was putting three as their least favorite. Not that it was whack, but it was their mm. least favorite. But interesting, we'll interesting. I'm, I'm excited to get those uh, those thoughts, man. Tossing it to you, Amanda. Your mm. initial thoughts on this third episode, favorite. Least favorite, somewhere in the middle. What do you think about this third episode? It is my least favorite. I feel like every single episode three in an MCU show has suffered because they're trying to connect part one, like the first half of the season to the second half of the season. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to add so many things that there's not really that much of a flow and it doesn't feel like it's connected. It feels more disjointed because they're trying to connect both sides. Yeah. Um, it's still, I feel like the second half of this episode is better than the first first half for me just because mm -hmm. we get a bit more uh meat i guess for the characters but uh yeah it's it's like for me it's like a three and a half out of five i still gotcha. love what they did in this but it yeah. is the weakest out of the ones that we've seen hey there you guys here and we're gonna break it all down i'm, I'm kind of in the middle between chris and amanda I, it's not my favorite of the the three so far um i still think i have two over three and then of course you know we'll we'll get into episode four next week but i i definitely i, I definitely agree with what amanda said and chris in regards to the pros you know the, the flow of the second half being a little bit more enticing to me what i wanted from this show was like let's get into the gods let's talk about the power scaling what are the existence of these Egyptian gods? Do, do the, the celestials know about them? Do you know Norse mythology owning them? So all that conversation that we get, which we'll talk about, that stuff was great. And you know I've been one of that action, Amanda and Chris. And we we, we yeah. get some action and more of that action in this third episode, third episode. And speaking of the third, there seems to be a third personality in good, the good mix that we will get into here. I'm very curious on what you guys are thinking. So I definitely think there are a lot of great things to say about it. This is some, you know, some stuff at the beginning, like Amanda said, it seemed a little bit off in the pacing, but I think this is one of those episodes that really kind of opens up the door of kind of this mythology and kind of the, the gods at hand and the other avatars on the, on the playing field. So a lot to explore, no less, but let us know in the chat guys watching live on the replay, what you guys thought, your initial thoughts, but getting into the conversation, Amanda, we, we get a little bit more, of Lila here. She's getting her passport to go save her hubby. She's still in the mix. She wants to figure things out. And we have this conversation with, I assume, uh, was like like a motherly figure, a close friend of the family yeah. who does all these uh, IDs making out. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. maybe Mark, she knew Mark, so I'm sure Mark has gotten IDs and passports from her. But it's in this scene, Amanda, that it seems like there is a, you know, a missing father in the mix and more so a dead father. And um, I don't know if it's safe to put two and two together. He was, you know, on a digging site. We learned mm -hmm. last week that Mark Spector was a mercenary who took out a bunch of people on a digging site. I don't know if uh, if we can put any correlations to that, but your thoughts on this opening scene and just kind of getting more of this solo time with uh, Layla in this opening sequence. 
I think she's such a strong character and I feel like the writing for her has improved. I didn't really like her that much in episode two because I feel like the writing for her was a bit bland and like too much of like, oh, she's the spouse. Like she's this person that's attached to Mark kind of thing. She didn't really have that much to do. Mm-hmm. So to like open, like to see her in action, obviously in episode two, like a bit more, that's fine. But episode three is where you kind of like get more of her backstory, like you said, and makes her more interesting. And hopefully that there is that kind of connection to Mark in that way, because that would that would cause even more issues. So yeah, I think that yeah. that would be really good for her. But if she's tied to someone who's very like of importance, I think that would be really cool moving forward just to give her more of a role in the MCU and uh, in the show. So she's, she's cool. She's coasting, you know, but I, yeah. I think that she had a bit more to do in this one, which made me happy. Yeah. 100%. And you know, there is more to explore with the character for sure in future episodes. But Chris, getting into your thoughts, man, on this whole idea of the father uh, being, you know, she doesn't know what happened to her dad. We we learned something about Mark last week. But just in general, how are you taking in this opening sequence from uh, this character? And also, she seems to be on the black market and dealing with antiques. And there was a big Easter egg that we'll talk a little bit about later. But your thoughts on this uh, this opening sequence, man? Yeah, before that, I want to touch on Bernice's comment. And I think it's it's like a good comment like that she she said this is mm. the first mcu character where i'm just confused and it's yeah. not like you shouldn't feel bad because it's it's a lot that's going on and it's all brand new to us so we're all learning yeah. like a very complicated story so it's like for people like us we're talking like okay like yeah like we're digging to it but like who, who knows like who, are we are we re-watching it like i think it's a show that you can definitely you can miss things Pick and things you know, up yeah you can watch a lot yeah. of like the, like the recaps and stuff like that so like yep. shout out to you for coming forward don't feel bad this shit is a lot but yeah. I actually randomly, weirdly like this opening scene. It was just kind of fascinating. This is where I do my little ghetto moments, but like it reminded me of Blue Streak on when we went on uh, Martin. Lawrence, <laughs> Martin get the yeah. he got his fake he got his fake police badge. So maybe yeah. I just got a special place in my heart for those hood movies. But I, I was just very like into I was just very into the the process of like simple acting, telling the story while doing this crazy yeah. act, yep. seeing how mm-hmm. it's done. Pay attention to like. I'm watching how they're doing it and I'm also listening to the story. Mm-hmm, and I feel yeah. the same exact way as Amanda because in the beginning, I thought she was super whack, like the character Layla. First, the first time you see her, especially yeah. this episode was the first time I saw her. I was like, oh, okay, she, yeah, she's valid. Like, that's it. It took till this episode where I was like, okay, I get it. But before that, yeah. I was like, yo, this is chick is super boring. I don't care about this. I don't want them to make out. And I always want people to make out. And I didn't want any of that. <laughs> but uh, I like the opening scene. I, and I don't even really know why. I just, it just seemed like a cool opening scene. You you guys both hit the nail on the head, especially your last points there, Chris, in regards to just the, mm-hmm. the naturalism of that scene. Like she's done this a million times. She goes mm-hmm. and gets these IDs. She has this relationship with this, uh, this woman. Uh, she has, you know, different affairs of, again, she's not just at home waiting for mark she's just not at home you know where's mark she's on the she's doing her own thing she has her own side uh intrigues and interests that she gets into so i definitely think that this episode livening up the character for sure it made us more intrigued that she isn't like i said just sitting at home waiting for her husband searching for her husband she has her own life but at the same time she wants to you know see what her husband's up to i think she even mentions in this opening scene that Mark bought a house not too far away from where they used to live, which is very intriguing again, because who is in control? Is it Mark? Is it Steven? Who who came first, the egg or the chicken? Uh, So Mm -hmm. it even adds more layers to that whole, you know, setup and and all that stuff. But yeah, I definitely agree with you both that this was a a needed scene to kind of get a moment without Mark with her and and really kind of exploring this character. And again, I think there are some uh, some tragedies afloat when, uh, you know, that she might put two and two together that Mark uh, had something to do with the uh, disappearance or as we know the death of her father yeah. but he kept saying over and yeah. over and over like you don't want to know everything that uh like yeah. So. yeah yeah and i mean we i don't know if they bring it up well arthur brings it up a little bit later i personally don't think that mark like killed her dad like i don't think he was the trigger man per se but i definitely think he yeah. was around that facility and around the area when all that happened and it's also a hawkeye like, crossovers there too exactly the, uh, mm-hmm. exactly and again even the yeah. um even from my limited comic book knowledge, this sounds about this tracks about right to some of the Moon Knight backstory of him and a um, associate. I want I think his name's like Bushmaster, and he killed Bushmaster was the one that actually killed all these people, and Moon Knight tried to stop him. He killed mm-hmm. him in the comics, and that's where he gets resurrected in Kanju. So I'm pretty sure we might get a a flashback of two or two exploring that whole what actually yeah. happened to her dad and whatnot. But I can definitely see that being a conflict of like 
this is the moment where Layla is going to be like, I can't trust you. You literally killed my dad. And you know how TV shows do. That's going to be the breaking point. And then they're going to find something. She's going to find the truth out. And, you know, it, it writes itself. But we'll see. Maybe they'll put a spin to it. But speaking of putting to a spin to it, uh, get into this conversation about Oscar Isaac training, coming, seeing it in the forefront, Amanda. We saw the Instagram clips a couple years ago of him training, but now we get to actually see him, not in the suit, because obviously Moon Knight is during the moon, so he's not going to have, he can't summon the mm -hmm. suit in daylight. So Oscar, we get to see him kick some ass, Amanda, in this sequence here, put it in that work. Uh, he has a cold. He doesn't kill kids, which I like that there is a line that he will not cross. Uh, mm -hmm. But he, if you cross him, he and you're not a kid, he will kill you, as we see in the yeah. scene here. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But going to your thoughts here, man, again, Mark, I want to say Oscar Isaac put in that work and seeing that hand-to-hand -hand combat was something pretty awesome. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Not only did he look good doing it, but I shouldn't like condone that, but like not only did he look great, but like I, he pulled some punches, like instead of like punching someone, he slapped them. Like I, I saw him make those conscious de decisions when he was mm -hmm. fighting. So I thought that was really good. cool. Yeah, exactly. So I, I really like that, um, that he has that line, like you said, Elliot. Uh, but yeah, the combat's really cool. I think all the action sequences have been different and have been unique to the character. And I think they've been unique to Mark and then unique to also Steven, who's, do we really call it fighting? I mean, whatever Steven does is Mr. <laughs> Knight is his own thing. But yeah. um, I like that they've been playing around with the camera angles. Yeah. In this particular scene, you felt like he was punching you or he was hitting you in like in different ways. So I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. It's fast paced. And we love that hand to hand combat. I mean, we love, love the it. Winter Soldier. So oh, it's yeah. really wicked when we see something like that. Um, but yeah, I think that these scenes... Oscar Isaac put in the work like all around every single aspect mm -hmm. in being a hero or um, in being in a comic book movie. I think he absolutely nailed. So in this case, when it's the hand to hand combat, it's like instant drooling because yeah. it just it looks so good and he killed it. So. I agree. And it just goes to show you, too, that Mark Spector is a badass. You know, it's not just a suit. He can he can hold his own. I mean, he can't take bullets and, you know, being impaled by uh, pipes or whatnot, but he can fight. He can take on a group of guys, which I think is great that we get to see that other side of Mark Spector. Uh, and, and obviously, when he gets a suit, he's just 10 times more, um, you know, intimidating. But, Chris, man, this is where we get into the speculation side of it. You know, he Mark's about to kill the guy, but obviously Steven doesn't want to be a part of these killings and, the, and then all the death sicknesses that mark puts out there so he takes control he wakes up in the car he sees the guys he just fall on the roof and he chases them down and then he you know steve tries to take over again he snaps out but then this is where the speculation comes chris and i want to get your thoughts on this as we see him stabbing the individual killing a bunch of dudes around him steven didn't do that mark didn't do that I think it's pretty safe to say, uh, Chris, that we, we got another personality out there. What was your thoughts on this, man? Yeah, I thought the rooftop scene, like, it's cool that he's fighting and the, and the, and the action is cool, but I, I thought the goons were just like cartoons. Like, oh, like one of the guys looked yeah. like the like from the Princess <clears throat> Bride, just like like Antonio Banderas <laughs> or like the, the Mask of Zorro or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Like, I think, and I think he had eyeliner. Uh, anyway. I, th I hated the characters, but the action is cool, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then I, th I, I was confused because like a lot of this stuff, like people are in the chat talking about, you know, you know, about Jake and all that, the third mm -hmm. personality. But like, mm -hmm. you must know the comics to understand that. So it's like, yeah. I don't know if there would have been a value of of Marvel releasing a little, hey, here's a quick little thing on this before because it's a lot to unpack. You know, luckily we have Elliot to host these watch alongs, so you guys can get caught up. <laughs> But in the moment, at first I thought it was crazy that Mark even accused Stephen of killing these people. I'm like, you know, he's not killing. Right, so he like, ain't about that life. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. at first I was confused too, but then I was like, wait, why would you even accuse him? You don't, you don't even want him to come out because because right. he won't kill. So yeah, then I was like, I guess there's more. But then I didn't know in the comics I didn't know there was a third. So I was just like, is there another thing where like they they don't even know what they're doing sometimes? So like I didn't even put it to, together until like way later. Yeah. Yeah, and we, we talked about it, I think, last week in regards to the different when we met Mr. Knight uh, and, and had a little brief discussion over it. But I don't I, I know some and, and Lewis brings up, you know, the Jake personality. And again, this is Marvel. They can definitely remix the character uh, and take kind of, you know, liberties in the creative route that they want to do with the character. But to my knowledge of Jake, he's not a killer. You know, he's a taxi driver who keeps his ears to the ground and kind of get the local level of crime. What's Just going like on, getting, especially when he's in homework. New York? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't I did, I never took again just limited knowledge. I know I never took Jake as a as a killer, but 
again, they can remix it. They might even introduce a whole new personality as a whole because Steven isn't Steven as he is in the comics. Steven is the, you know, everyone compares him to Batman. Steven's the whole, he's the Bruce Wayne of the persona. He's the billionaire of the persona. Like but finance he's, guy or something. Yeah, he's not rich in this mm -hmm. show and he works, you know, he just lost his job. So they definitely could take uh, creative liberties. But Amanda, your thoughts on this possible third personality, which even brings up, uh, as I bring up a couple of photos here, Maybe it makes me think of maybe he was the guy that was involved in the, uh, you know, the incident at the um, the museum. Uh, and then obviously in this episode. Yeah. So your thoughts on, you know, if it is Jake or another mysterious third personality. I 100 percent think they're going to bring in Jake because like even in the credit scenes at the end, you see that Oscar Isaac's title card is kind of split into three. So they have to introduce a third one like the third one is in Conchu, I think. So they're, they're going to bring in Jake. Um, but especially in this episode, this scene, particularly you feel like it's one of them doing it, but if it's more brutal, then you're obviously leaning towards Mark. But what if they make Jake this like unhinged character instead of like yeah. the taxi driver that um, we know, right? Not to like, cut you off, I just totally thought of yeah. taxi driver, thought of uh, taxi, De De uh, De, De Niro and, and yeah, Travis, yeah, he, who was off, hit, off his hinges. So yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. So if they make him like go beyond Mark mm -hmm. and Steven, I think they would have a bit more to work with, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. but we'll see. Yeah, it's a like you said, they can remix it. Um, yeah. but he's yeah. definitely coming in, he has to. And it's, I mean, even and that's and Chris, you touched on it earlier in regards to looking at this show from a different lens on a rewatch or what have you. Just even thinking about episode one with the uh, just the idea of him axing that girl out. Like, obviously, Steve didn't do that. We know Mark is married, he doesn't want to get into affairs with other women. So, again, that even goes back to we've been mm -hmm. having a third personality since the very first episode. So, it mm -hmm. definitely kind of plants the seeds there. And even um, the end of episode two, when we saw, uh, we thought it was Mark on the ground, all bloodied up and had the, the beer or the, the, you know, the alcohol. Was that Mark or was that the, you know, the violent individual? Because it was blood yeah. on the curtains, it was blood on him. So, I don't know, guys. I, I think, know. Amanda, you might be onto something that we might have a third personality that's just like completely off the rails and is definitely yeah. willing to do anything and everything to get answers. Yeah. But speaking of answers, Kanju mm -hmm. is willing to do whatever to get this resolved and figure out the location of uh, Hero, uh, Arthur Hero, as he is using his full abilities, which is manipulating the sky. And when I see you all, the production value, number one, Kanju looks so dope. I just love the the look and the design and, and the personality. Look and the swag and his I think he look a lot better. Yeah, a lot cleaner for sure, Chris. I definitely agree with you. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is the stuff I want to hear. We meet other gods, Amanda. You know, we see him say that I need you to speak on my behalf, which we'll talk about just the excellent performance by Oscar Isaac, not only playing Steven, but playing Mark, playing Kanju. This is a tour de France of acting, if you want to call it that. <laughs> but Amanda, your thoughts on, number one, we're introduced to these other gods in the MCU. And I saw something on Twitter the other day, if, if um, you know, tying into the X-Men, we know that there is an Egyptian guy by the name of uh, Apocalypse. I wonder if, uh, if Oscar Isaac oh is going to pick up that torch again or if they're going to just my recast God. him. He's like, no more purple for me. But <laughs> Amanda, this is so dope to me. We get this conversation amongst the gods and they're, you know, bringing Arthur to the stand to, you know, uh, answer for his, you know, what alluding to be these uh, these sins of taking over the world. Your thoughts on just this whole setup of, of, of the gods and the meaning amongst the gods. Yeah, I absolutely love Conchu's look, first and foremost. I think this is like the cleanest any creature, I guess, has looked um, in the MCU, personally. I think it looks just so polished and really, really strong. Um, I love that Conchu and Mark have that relationship and we get to see a bit more of that. And even with Steven in the mix, like they hear each other. But having the avatars of the gods and like having that, I guess, trial, if you want to call it, was so freaking cool and i want to see more of that i think they're really diving into the mythology of it all and that yeah. side of the mcu extremely well yep. um and that's why like side note loki bothers me that i feel like not many people are talking about this show and like i feel like it's on the same level as like the fantastical elements of loki Mm -hmm. with the mythological elements that I feel like more people should be like diving into Moon Knight, I think, and like enjoying his character. I feel like it's not enough. So yeah. get to watching <laughs> David Bay, the PSA. God, please watch it. Um, 
But yeah, I love the side of it. I absolutely yeah. love it. Oscar Isaac being Mark Spector and then voicing and having the physicality of Conchu speaking through him. Like it is just next level for him. And like I said, in the other two episodes, he has been putting on a clinic like of acting. He's so freaking good. His physicality, his voice changing. Like you could tell that these are different people and it's just one person doing this. So kudos to him, but I want to see more of this. I want yeah. more backstory. <laughs> of mm -hmm. the gods and that mythology because this is just scratching the surface and there's yeah. so much that they can do and it's interesting i feel yeah. like that's why like the rest of the mcu is great don't get me wrong but we mm -hmm. never like touch this so i want more of it well said man and it's so great because as you just mentioned you know this is obviously the fantastical you know supernatural if you want to call it that side of the mcu but it's still yeah. a grounded character so they're giving us yeah. you know hawkeye meets loki in one show which is just so cool to kind of see that that character in yeah. itself has all those different elements uh that phase four seems to be wanting to tackle all in one show so definitely agree with you there and i think to your point of man, as far as like underappreciating, it's it's Oscar Isaac. So we always expect great performances. But I think we, I don't know if we're really appreciating, as you just mentioned, that is not easy to do to play all those different characters, you know, changing your mannerisms, the way you carry yourself, the way, I mean, it's, it is truly probably top tier performances in the MCU yeah. thus far, like in the entirety of the MCU. And that's no disrespect or slight towards the other incredible moments yeah. we got in, in, in the 28 plus movies and four shows so far but man chris oscar is doing his thing but man tossing it to you learning more about these gods and they seem to have a same mindset as the eternals where it's like we don't want to mess around with the human mm -hmm. affairs especially since the, uh, the the humans forgot about us as we know as centuries they, of yeah, they, went they, by they, they yeah, stopped they've uh, the gods. raising uh, praising us yeah it's crazy man but your thoughts about this whole sequence man yeah, before I get into the sequence, to Amanda's point about like people like not watching it, this is the first Disney show with a name we've never heard yet. Like I Wanda, know. we know, Vision, yeah. we know, Loki, we know, um, Falcon, know. some people know, but the Winter Soldier, we all know. <laughs> I'm just joking. How um, <laughs> no, so it's like Oscar Isaac, of course, everyone knows, but like yeah. getting people invested in this is going to be a harder pull for Disney. Luckily, there's people like, the, you know the content creators out there reviewing it and, and speaking yeah. highly of yeah. it but it's still going to take time for people to like come on board because you're learning a whole new story it wasn't even oh, alluded yeah, to before in the past so mm -hmm. um wow. even something like captain marvel is new but it came after such a crazy movie and you knew that yeah. it had like ramifications to both movies that, that it was in between yeah. like you, yeah. then you have a following there so moonlight has a like a, a tough battle to fight but that's yeah. what i attribute it's lack of viewership too and then of course i don't know the numbers yet we'll see it when it, when the streaming numbers come out but just I quickly think chris what, do, you, do you think uh miss marvel and she hulk will have similar difficulties as far well, as this marvel IP, looks familiar? like it's for kids so that, true, that looks like true. it's already gonna have problems she hulk you even got hulk in the name hulk in I'm the name it. Yeah. yeah so like hulk is what i know you you don't like how they treat hulk in the mcu but like Trash. hulk hulk as hulk in like the world of comics <laughs> gets loved so like yeah people are people yeah. are gonna watch that movie so like i think right now the people that are watching moon knight are the people who are like diehard marvel they're gonna watch anything on the in the mcu but right. it's gonna have a hard like little battle to to to, fill, to fight but this was my favorite scene of the episode when they went Same and talked man. to the gods and, and, yeah. and the court and all that. <clears throat> then his little his little boo things, a little sugar plum, singing those songs. Yeah. Oh man, what's her name? Um, but I yeah, totally I totally forgot her name. Uh, totally forgot her name. But, Hat Hator, um, Hator, Hator. Hator. From pronouncing yeah. it right. Yeah, Hator. Yeah, Hator is gonna Hator. Um, so I really like that scene. I really like that scene a lot. I like being inside. I like Steven. That quick moment realizing that he's inside the pyramid. Oh, kind of nerding just out. Up, up yeah. the reflection, yeah. nerding out yeah. on the moment. <laughs> I love that moment. Um, and I just love, you know, the uh, just the interactions, like how they how they're speaking, and then you get a little bit of the history lesson here. Yeah. So yeah, this is this was my this is my favorite scene. It was fantastic, man. Uh, and again, it just makes me wonder, you know, what other gods have been. Uh, well, we'll get into that a little bit later. But you know, other gods has maybe been uh, banished and put on hold, as we'll get to Kanju later in this episode. But yeah, I'm just so fascinated by that, and just like what other avatars have been 
you know, who other characters have been avatars of, of ancient gods at some point in the MCU? Have we met any of them uh, previously to, to Moon Knight? This gets me so uh, interested in all that. But mm -hmm. Amanda, tossing it back to you in this scene, you know, yeah. Arthur, I did find if I were to critique anything, you know, these these gods have been around for centuries. You know, Why don't they know he's toxic. He's just like he's able again. I know it's it's part of his persona. He's able to manipulate yeah. people. He has his own cult. But I'm like, guys, you just just taking his word for for what it is. But neither here nor yeah. there. He is able to switch the narrative. It's not about me. It's about Kanju. He's been banned. You gonna take you know, listen to his crazy person as well as speaking of crazy person. It's a reason why he picked this broken avatar because he has him and his own self has uh you know he's unstable. Yeah. So again, I thought angle. it was a little bit. Convenient. For him, that's a good angle. Yeah. They're definitely good. I can see what they were doing because that's the character. But I just found it a little mm -hmm. bit too convenient that they were just like, well, yeah, he's whatever. But Amanda, your thoughts on that sequence? And did you find it a little too easy or you thought you thought it was, you know, it fits the character and the narrative? Honestly, now that you said it, like, I do agree that it was more convenient than anything. But I also look at the fact that even Ethan Hawke's delivery, if we listen to him, he kept building with those accusations against yeah. Yeah. him. So, like, I That's think true. I was just more lost in the performance. And yeah. I didn't really think of, like, what he was saying. Because I'm like, he's the <laughs> villain. He's so good. Like, this is perfect type of yeah. thing. Um, but I do get what you're saying. It's all convenient to push it to, like episode four i think to like obviously yeah. um but i i just i loved ethan hawk's build like he's so yeah. subtle and then when he gets loud and he gets very um like not angry but like he just speaks mm -hmm. like so in such a powerful way to get his point across like yeah. it that slow build just sells it for me as a villain and he's absolutely killing it so that whole sequence like them looking at each other talking to each other accusing him and then go, yeah. going back and forth even Conchu, like he made me laugh he's like it's not me what are you yeah. talking about he's right there and i'm like no Conchu, feels so yeah. bad but yeah like it's really good stuff no it's it's fantastic and again i'll to, i guess retract my statements a little bit as far as easy it, it does play into the narrative because again uh he's you can switch it up i mean if there's a bigger fish to fry like the obvious point is forget about yeah. my allegations you have literally someone that you've abandoned or banished because of yeah. their you know trickery and manipulation of things and not playing by the rules so i guess it does kind of play into uh switching that narrative but again just to your point amanda ethan hawk is great i don't know if you all notice you when he walks you can hear the uh the glass i don't know if you guys have the volume yeah. up loud enough you can still hear noticed. the glass but I just saw in the yeah. chat talking about that. But that's 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 nice. Still good detail. It's but speaking nice. of detail, Chris, your thoughts on this? Uh, you know, him switching the narrative, blaming it on Kanju, blaming it on Mark's personality being broken, and switching that narrative in the in the gods there. And, and again, I guess now I'm going back. They're gods. They can see all the stuff going on. You, they can't see. What, Chris, help me out, man. Is it too easy, or is it just it kind of plays into the to the structure of the story? Yeah, I'm always. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm always trying to look for a way to suspension of belief it. So yeah. Uh, maybe he's too just too manipulative maybe he can maybe he has powers to trick them but it's a it's a great ask but i like that arthur mm -hmm. used that his mental you know issues <laughs> against him yeah man. and then and then he showed it right in front of the pretty much the quote unquote jury yeah so they had to be like all right well we we can see you're acting brazy so like this you know handcuff him which i thought was cool too just showing the power of that guy like because he's yeah. he's saying like we don't allow violence here. And he's showing you like how powerful he, he is in there. He's like, look, relax, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like he hemmed him up with his two fingers. So I thought it was a cool little scene, but you, of course, hopefully they answer like how he can get away with all that. But to, in the moment I was like, all right, I'm going to just go with it. I'm going to go with the flow. No, I agree with you. And again, maybe because we do know that he is the host, he's the avatar of, uh, of the God of mid. So maybe there is some deception and something like a cloak of like, truth that they can't see because that's the power of you know i think the well actually the power of man is like raising the dead but maybe there's some other you know other abilities that it has to yeah. uh deceit and deceive the other gods but before we move on to the uh the adventure part of the episode just a quick shout out to some of the super chats that came in i don't want to miss uh bad dog review showing some love hope you all are having a great day favorite mcu show uh well hope you're having a great day thank you for the super chat Starting with you, Chris, your favorite MCU show thus far. My favorite MCU show thus far is WandaVision with a very, very, very close Loki second place. Great list. Amanda? I would put Falcon in the Winter Soldier second to Loki in first place. 
<laughs> yeah, nice, yeah, very nice. And mine's uh, the reverse of Chris for me. Mine is Loki, then WandaVision as far as my favorite show. And uh, hey, we got three more episodes of this show. We'll see if it's uh, – because right now, three episodes in, I think this is better than Hawkeye. Um, yes. And it, I, mm, I know Chris is in a Falcon Winter Soldier fan. I didn't like the way it ended, so I don't know. Right now, it's, no, it's it, definitely I above think, Hawkeye. I think Falcon – could like the first three could hang with this show like uh, it, it was it was it was a good three it was yeah hey, guys weird. marketing your calendars to the first you know many uh he said some good things when we reviewed it obviously but you don't hear too many good compliments from uh from this guy when it comes to falcon winter soldier. a lot of winter soldier yeah. moments in there <laughs> and then a quick i think i saw another come out i don't want to miss that i think uh yep my boy brandon from just my opinion reviews what? check him out definitely a great person also has a fantastic uh, uh show with movie reviews tv reviews he has a, a weekly show that he does on sunday so definitely check him out guys but brandon said bro what what was Steven and Kanju doing at the end? <laughs> swagging the, the stars. Seriously, we we're uh, rotating the earth, creating an illusion, or literally swagging the star stars are as far as AF. Dope episode. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, listen, uh, Brandon, I, the, the science behind how he was able to do that doesn't mean that everyone across the world saw the stars at once. Mm -hmm. Was it just that isolated incident? Who knows with MCU, but uh, yeah. very the Egyptians good definitely there. saw it. They, there's a scene oh, yeah. that you, they're outside yeah. seeing it, so it's yep. like. No. Man, and this makes me wonder too. Like, did the did the other Avengers see this? Did the other Avengers not see the uh, celestial come out of the ground? Where are our Avengers, guys? Why isn't no one addressing? Bro, they're on spring break. They're on spring break, yeah, man. Literally. You know, they're you know, we got Cap doing his thing, getting prepped for his own movie, and you know, the other Avengers are just hanging out. I guess they just got back from the blip, so they're just like, ah, we'll, we'll get to that later. But <laughs> shout out to Brandon from Just My Opinion Reviews with a super chat and a dope question there. But transitioning into more of it, we get the hat tour telling the location of the sarcophagus or where you can find the location of Ahmed. And this is where we get a little bit more of the um, the conversation amongst the uh, the husband and wife, yep. Mark and Alila. And yeah. uh, tossing to you first, Chris, we, we see, again, him putting on that lair. And, but he also is a little bit vulnerable in that moment. You know, they talk about their getting married. And this is the first time, you know, they've seen that, uh, you know, since they've, you know, the, when they got married or whatnot. But it's in that moment, man, where you get to that, that quieter moment between these two actors, man. What did you think about it? Yeah, this is another cool moment. And, like, I like the opening with, with, with Layla. But um, I did like this scene with them, too. This is, this is where, because in the beginning, I was like, I still don't like her, but this is good. But this is where I was like, okay, they're, they're keeping it up. I love the lighting of the boats, of the party boat scene, which was very similar to Moon Light lighting mm. from the, the yeah, cover of that movie. Yeah, ah. <laughs> nice. yeah with the purple that cues, a, yeah. That was, definitely a, beautiful. That, was, nice. that was a deep cut. But yeah. I like I liked the interaction. Because I, I don't really like Steven yet. And as oh, a character, you know, like, yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't really... He's, he's no, still growing on me. I'm bugging from Mark. Yeah. Mark, sorry, sorry, Mark. Oh, Sorry. okay, okay. I like wow. Steven. I, I don't like Mark, Mark yet. Like, I don't, like, uh, something's missing from Mark, but this scene helped get me there, get me closer. Okay. I was like, okay, cool, 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 Kind of cool. humanize them a little bit. Yeah, because yeah. Layla, because Layla's stepping up, and I'm like, all right, well, Layla, I see, you know, this guy obviously hurt you or whatever. Like, I get it. Like, I could see, like, the, like there was something real there. But then in the, when we get to the other part, too, you see Steven stepping up because she's like, look, he, he hasn't hurt me yet, this personality, and he got an accent, and we all know. <laughs> Accents are sexier, so we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. But I thought it was crazy. What about you, Amanda? Your thoughts on this kind of one-on-one -on -one conversation? Uh, you know, talking about their marriage, talking about their connection, or whatnot, and seeing that obviously she's still in love with her husband. You know, every yeah. every right so, but obviously Stephen wants to, or Mark wants to detach himself because obviously we found out last week the Kanju has plans for his next avatar. So he doesn't want her to be anywhere around all this foolishness, which makes me wonder why did he even marry her in the first place? Like he, she obviously knows about all this stuff. And yeah. I assume that he was a mercenary and doing all this stuff when they got married. So I don't know why, she, why he even married her. But anyway, you're, you're thoughts on all that. I think exactly. you know, heroes have to get, you know, they, I can't say heroes <laughs> can't fall in love, but I mean, you got these gods and you're killing people, but Hey, heroes need love too, I guess. Yeah, they totally do. Um, I like this scene. I really, I liked it just because you felt, for me anyway, like you felt the comfort of them being together and that they've been together for so long that they understand each other. 
even like um you know like small like body movements or even um just little things that they do or say like there's an underlining meaning like they know each other so well and i thought that they got that in in this particular scene uh they're cool i like them together i completely understand the entire situation but mark's like i can work through it she can work through it they obviously don't want to lose each other so i I get it. And like, like Caitlin just said, like Oscar's playing every single side of this so incredibly well. So yeah, that scene brings them closer together. They were bonding a bit more. I still, I'm not sold on the chemistry aspect, but maybe it's a different type of chemistry that like, I'm not really close to seeing. I don't know, I guess. Um, but there's that, there's that comfort, which is good. So we'll see how, how well they do. You know, not to to, to glance over that, I definitely agree. It's so hard, especially with MCU stuff, when you have an established relationship that's been established off camera and you're trying to believe that they've yeah. been, I don't even know how long they've been married, uh, yeah. but it's just so hard to see it. At, they're obviously in a bad place. There's tension, there's, he wants to divorce her. So when you're introduced in the relationship in a negative light, it's kind of hard to imagine, okay, how, what do they look like when they're is. happy? Yeah, it's exactly. Like, see that. So it is, I, I totally yeah. agree with you, man. It's hard to kind of, grasp that oh this is you know this is our next uh you know steve and um you know peggy yeah. or this Carter. is next yeah. you know other i can't yeah. another good couple in the mc because everyone else to me is like or and jane is whack wanda uh okay good one wanda I, and even though it was right. alive, um, um <laughs> yeah so it's we don't have the most romantic stuff in the mc so it is it's very yeah. hard for them to establish a good relationship so i don't know maybe sense. we'll get a, a flashback of them work gets in the way a lot Work gets yeah him gods and killing people yeah. gets in a, her stealing stuff or not stealing but getting back stuff from Black Market. They're they're very busy individuals, so maybe yeah. love doesn't come as easy to them as uh, as it does to others. But getting to and I guess I don't want to forget too because I forgot to mention it. Mark mentions to her that he had Stephen under control for a very long time, and he doesn't say like what was it that snapped, what mm -hmm. was it that made him lose control. I don't know uh, Chris or Amanda if you guys caught that, and if you have any theories on like what event could have caused him to lose control of, um, you know, Mark, or I should say Stephen. Was it the moment that thought, he killed his dad or been a part of that? Or your thoughts, uh, Chris? Uh, yeah, when I was hearing that in the episode, I thought that Stephen was just getting stronger on the other side. I thought he was mm. referencing, like, right now, like, Maybe. I kicked, I, I, got the body, I got the body back, but he's creeping up. So I was just seeing it as, oh, like, you know, Steven's just figuring it out and getting inside his head more. He's understanding how to maybe get it back. Yeah. I didn't put it in, in my mind as like an, like like how in the in the beginning how he even lost it. Mm. Do you think mm -hmm. it's always been there? I don't know. Yeah, Amanda, what hey. about you? Who, who do you think came first, the chicken and the egg, in regards to Steven and Mark? And Mark is did he create this life for Steven to work at the museum to have the mom calls the postcards? Uh, and what event do you think sparked this uh, the Stephen personality? If if Stephen is the second yeah. in command, there's one of two things that I can think of. I feel like that could be his safe zone of Stephen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. maybe like the snap could have been him, like Mark finding out that Kanju wants Layla as the avatar, mm -hmm. maybe, and like that could have been like it, like the fragment of his mind, like kind of broke because he's mm -hmm. trying to like protect her so that could also be a factor in how that relates to steven yeah. but i do think that steven's like safety zone and i think that's the comfort especially if there's a link to the mother i yeah. think that's like safety zone psychologically i can't wait to find out I, even thinking more into um you know creating as you mentioned a safety zone i wonder if if Steven, again, the personality of being so into this Egyptian stuff and knowing that uh, mm -hmm. Lila's dad was in that too, I wonder if he took any personality traits from her dad and kind of picked up on mm -hmm. some of that stuff. Because again, maybe who is this? How did he pick up on this Steven thing? Like as far yeah. as creating this life, loving that stuff of, uh, yeah. you know, Egyptian stuff. So I, I can't wait to get that reveal. And uh, it's going to be something okay. to really dive into. But getting into, I guess to me, and I'm pretty sure, so many great content creators on YouTube that do the deep dives and Easter eggs every single week. But this to me was like the biggest, like obvious Easter egg in the show so far. Uh, and I know Chris, again, going back to Falcon and Winter Soldier, we get a, a big uh, name drop in this episode, man. And, and your thoughts on number one, the name drop of Matrapore, as we see uh, Layla and, and Mark make their way to meeting this gentleman that we'll talk about Anton here. But Matrapore, Chris, is, is is the power broker at all involved in this story? Is Sharon Carter going to pop up in episode five or six and, and wreck shop? 
I, I don't think so, but <laughs> you know, the connection is obviously clear. We see the power broker as a collector of like all this random mm -hmm. shit around the earth. And yeah. then, you know, my girl Robin Hood is trying to take the take shit it. back yep. and put it back where it, where, you know, where it where came from, where it belongs. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to bring her out. They, and they must not. know that the really fans are like, <laughs> They must know the fan, like she's not reading well on the screen, especially based yeah. on Falcon. Yeah. So they must know that. And then I always go back to the same point before the show started that, you know, I don't know if it was Feige or any, or who, but they were like, you're not, don't, don't be looking for cameos. It's not a huge yeah. connection to the MCU yeah. in this, in these yeah. six episodes. So I, I was not looking for anything crazy, Yeah. but I loved any connection. So it, yeah. it's cool to see that it is part of yeah. the future. Um, so that was cool. And to your point, Austin, to you, man, I think that there yeah. is a – because they even say that stuff you pulled off at Magic for, I think, like Chris said, that she was probably coming in there, taking the stuff, causing a rift, causing some you know, uh, yeah. issues with the power broker uh, and what have you. But uh, mm -hmm. I think this is a, a pretty cool – again, like Chris said, I, I don't think so far, three episodes in, this is like the most connective, directly like said, Might like you don't have thing. to – yeah, you don't have yeah. to like, oh, if you zoom in really close, you can see yeah. an article of someone doing something in the back. Like, this is like literally in the forefront. They literally say, uh, you know, a known place that we learned from uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. But yeah. do you yeah. think Sharon Carter and not even a power broker, but even knowing um, Shang Chi's sister now is the lead of uh, the Ten Rings? So I don't know if, if that has any ties yeah. at all. And the Ten Rings with the, obviously, the, again, I can go. <laughs> on and on about just diving deep into these theories, but any thoughts on this match report thing? Is it a throwaway line, or do you think there's some significance to maybe some other ties coming up in the future? I think they needed to keep it in the realm of it. So I think like a small drop, like Madge Report, considering what we know is good to keep it in the MCU, in the universe, but I don't think anything's going to come from it. Like, I think the power broker is just like one of the, like, it's such a blind character and I just don't want a blind character yeah. associated with the greatness that is Moon Knight. I'm sorry, but it's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think anything's going to come from it. I like the name drop. I think Magic Report was yeah. really cool how they did it in uh, mm -hmm. Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. So that's a bonus. You know? and, and, so. and it makes sense as we learned from Layla in this episode that she would probably have connective ties to these, you know, famous places that are known for stealing stuff in the black market. But uh, yeah, I thought it was cool. Again, I was joking about Sharon Carter. I do not want her anywhere <laughs> near this show uh, at all. Uh, and l let alone in the MCU and anymore. They need to rewrite that somehow, bring Enough in a multiverse, enough. different power broker. And, and yeah, Sharon needs yeah. Anyway, speaking of uh, another introduction of, of a certain sort, uh, Gaspin, you know, this gentleman here, unfortunately, if you guys don't know, yeah, that's couple, crazy. Yeah, like mm -hmm. I want to say end of last year, unfortunately. this He's a great actor. I've seen some other projects that gasman has been in, but he did unfortunately pass away, and he is Anton in this show, who I am, again, limited knowledge to the MCU, but uh, he goes by a character in the comic books by the name of uh, Midnight Man, who is someone that steals antiques and has had many different battles across the comic books with Moon Knight. So we are introduced to him, uh, and again, RIP to him. I, it's it really... Yeah. Sucks that you know, obviously, uh, he lost his life and whatnot. I'm, I'm very intrigued to see if Marvel, obviously, much different character, but obviously, we know what they're doing with Chad with But I wonder if they're gonna rewrite the character, reintroduce the character, not bring him up anymore. But neither here nor there, we, we get introduced to this character, and this is where kind of the action sequences take place, uh, in regards to getting a little bit of his backstory. We see that they found the area that they want to get in, and what I love about this scene here is, and I think this speaks to eventually what's going to have to come to a head mark and steven going to have to work together because it's in this scene yeah. that they work pretty well together he's yeah. the, I'm not saying that mark's stupid but you know steven's the brains and he's the the, the brute but, force yeah. it's not like easy yeah. stuff it's not like he's stupid it's just like this exactly. is a great and like you need to know the game like to even to speak to this stuff exactly so i think uh inevitably at least i hope by the end of the show that they come to some type of the Hulk, who, how we got to Professor Hulk to me was just poorly handled. But I hope that Stephen and Mark and whoever this third personality is come to accords and can figure out the the more we work together, the more we can get accomplished. But tossing it to you, Amanda, as we get, mm -hmm. as I've been waiting for for weeks, we get, uh, not that we haven't gotten action, but I think it's pretty safe to say that this is the best action set piece that we've gotten in the show so far. The yeah. brutality of Moon Knight him cracking arms, breaking arms, breaking limbs, yeah. just going ham. 
I mean, Amanda, I was just in, in action heaven during this scene. What was your thoughts of this uh, this action sequence that we get here? I was just so happy. Like, I don't think I've ever been that happy. <laughs> like, it was just so I'm in the suit. It was so good. And before that, I do want to touch upon um, how amazing the shots were in the pyramid when Stephen was talking uh, to Mark. I yeah. really love that yeah, back yeah. and forth. That they did like an incredible job with that. And it's the first time that we actually get to see them working together and actually listening to each other. And then that mm -hmm. carried into the action scene, which just made it so fun because you're switching yeah. from like Moon Knight to Mr. Knight. And then you have Steven like popping out and like Mark's talking to him at the same time. And like this suit is gorgeous. It's so pretty. Every time I see the Moon Knight suit, I'm like, can I please just own it? Because it looks phenomenal. Like, look how beautiful that looks. No MCU suit it compares to this one. I'm sorry, but it's the freaking it's truth. It yeah. is beautiful. And to see it in action, holy Lord. But as you said, um, it was way more brutal. Sound design was really good. The score was really good. All of it coming together. You could hear everything happening. And what I really appreciated is that there was great lighting. So yeah. you could see, see it, yes. right? And yes. whenever it's a night shoot with an action scene, I feel like you can see, you literally can't see anything majority of the time, which sucks. Yep. So I'm just happy that you could see the suit, especially because the I think um, episode two, it was really dark. And when they fall, like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you couldn't really like appreciate the suit in action that much, but I think they really highlighted um, what the suit can do for Mark and what uh, Stephen can do as Mister Knight. I thought that was really cool, so I loved it. No, I agree, Chris. Man, yeah. your thoughts on uh, um, this action set piece, this Anton character, uh, as well as seeing you know the suit being summoned and Mark, as a man alluded to, Mark and you know Mister Knight coming into the same scene at once during this fight sequence. What do you think about it, man? I, I thought the action was really good because at first I, I was like, where are they at? Like, what, like, where are they going? Like, I didn't get the build up to it. And figuring out that puzzle gave me a lot of Lost City vibes. Sandra Bullock voice. Mm. If you guys watched that. Great <laughs> very, rom-com. Yeah. Very, very similar mm -hmm. kind of thing, trying to figure out the little clues yeah. there. But um, favorite line of the episode was right here. Um, take the body back as soon as... Uh, Mr. Knight gets stabbed. <laughs> Calm the F down. Everyone chill out. Chop. <laughs> get the yeah. money. Get the money. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, Amanda's not wrong. That suit is fire, but the Mr. Knight suit is fire too. Pretty clean. And yeah. a, lot, yeah. a lot easier to pull off for all the Halloween fans out there. For <laughs> True. <October. Yes. laughs> Much Do easier it. to pull off Mr. Knight than, uh, <laughs> than, than Moon Knight. But if you could pull off Moon yeah. Knight, I think Amanda's trying to plot on it right now. I'll give you props for that. But I thought the scene was fire. Mm -hmm. And I think it'd be hard for anyone to say, there's that many MCU show scenes of action that are better than this um, yeah. so far. So I was pretty, yeah. I was pretty impressed with it. I mean, and, and to take it up that notch of like, we heard Marvel and I still have, I still don't think we got to levels of before the show came out. We have to, you know, we were watching on set and like, are you guys going to push the envelope or they're not going to like, the show isn't like brutal like that. Like, come on. I don't know if it was Kevin Feige or one of the other people involved mm -hmm. in the show. Like it's not to that level, but to be yeah. fair, I mean, listen, they were they uh, there was some brute force being put on Moon Knight. I mean, the man was literally yeah. getting stabbed through the chest, yeah. and not only was he stabbed, did he get stabbed, but he stabbed other people with, which I thought was so badass. He was impaling the other guys, and, and again, he's not just knocking them out, he's not just stunning yeah. them, he's killing these fools, which I do appreciate that because I, I like a good uh action <laughs> hero that doesn't take any nonsense but i guess yeah. the question i do have and correct me if i'm wrong uh amanda and chris but we see mm -hmm. anton you know he tries to kill lila but we see moon knight throws his uh moon at him it's safe to assume that he is just wounded he's going to come back um i don't know if that was just like a i don't i don't think it was a reshoot because obviously we know what what happened to him um yeah. in real in the real life but do you guys expect that we get more of anton as if he were to be his comic book co counterpart as midnight man do you think we'll get more of uh anton in future episodes i mean i didn't see it i saw i thought i saw it as him getting wounded but yeah okay when mm -hmm. i was watching it i didn't know that he passed away in real life so maybe that's yeah. a reshoot to then just say like that's how you can uh, remove him but remove i don't know how much they the filmed character. before he passed yeah, yeah. Your thoughts, Amanda? Do you think that was just like one of those, he's wounded, uh, he'll be back in the scene, or is this like a, I don't want to say a perfect way, but is this their way of writing the character out, just like he was, I don't know, killed in that moment? 
I think I think he's wounded. I yeah. think he's gonna come. I think like it's gonna be just this season, obviously, and hopefully, like they can wrap it up respectfully in that way if they're gonna go that that route. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it, he's wounded for sure. Considering what his character is um, in the comics and stuff like that, I think that we'll see him again. And I guess just, uh, and we'll get back to it, but do you guys personally think, and this obviously is a, the, the conversation I had with Chad with Bozeman, when you do have a real life circumstance of a character of an actor passing away on timely death, do you think it's, uh, is this a situation where you would like to see someone else take on the reins of Midnight Man? Or do you think uh, it's something that they shouldn't touch in the future, uh, Chris? Honestly, I understand there's a lot of heated debate about this topic. I kind of don't understand, um, you know, like people. I, I suppose if you do Black Panther, and I know I don't want to go in a deep dive on this, but yeah. like people think, people have said that if you don't recast T'Challa, that somehow the black experience is diminished. It's not like they're canceling the movies or the Wakanda TV show. So it's like, I don't understand. Like, there's other black powerful characters that are males in the in the show and in the movie so i kind of don't get the rage i'm I, i'm not on a camp either way like if they want to recast the child of course i'm cool with that but if they say that no they, they haven't thought of a way that's that's good that works for the story then mm -hmm. i don't i don't see it either i don't like in a world of multiverses i don't see why they couldn't just yeah kill him yeah. In, the, in in the mcu and then now there's another variant of the black panther in another universe yeah so the same thing with this so it's like obviously comparing this character much different with, circumstances oh, i don't even know his name the which character you, versus, yeah yeah i'm not gonna compare it to the black panther but like yeah. th most of the time i would think recasting it is is easier unless the character is so big Such like big black character, panther yeah. where maybe it, yeah. it's maybe it's just, yeah. it makes it too hard or the story doesn't work how marvel wants it to work right of course i'm just a spectator everyone has their opinion i'm not trying to you know argue with nobody because i don't yeah. really have a, like a dog in the fight and i'm not so i'm not willing to die on the hill for it but that's yeah. just how i feel yeah and this is again those two different circumstances obviously two uh you know unfortunate passing away but i think to your point of man if you have more to add to it i think a character like uh anton we just met him uh and i don't think it will be disrespectful yeah. by any means just my personal opinion to to recast the character that is yeah. to what i know moon knight doesn't have this rogues gallery like Spider-Man where he does have a Midnight Man's a pretty pivotal character to his story. Obviously, mm -hmm. Arthur was a small character in the comics. So your thoughts on, on the whole recast and if it's a character you would like to maybe explore in the future? I mean, I, I agree with what Chris said. I do. Uh, but it also depends because like, I, I hope it doesn't go like the Boba Fett route with Cad Bane where like it was only like set up for that particular character and then like, spoiler, but like he doesn't end up living by the end of that first season and like he's a massive um character for the bounty hunters in that yeah. case so if for midnight man if it's like a one-off villain for moon knight only in this particular season and then it doesn't like carry out because we have to remember that this is only one season we don't know if we're getting a season two, we don't know if we're going to see Oscar Isaac again right. as moon knight right. we don't know any of that so it depends if they are going to carry it out Mm -hmm. um but i feel like it's going to be a one-off uh villain i guess or like however you want to put it for the character i think that that's yeah. the route that they're going with in the second half of the show but yeah. like i said if they recast and we get a season two cool but mm -hmm. like it it depends on the situation how the story goes yeah because I, I think there is just from uh if we were to take from face value of the episode, I would think it would make sense that Anton, if he is just wounded, would come to uh, Arthur. Hey, I want my vengeance. I want to, you know, get my revenge back. And somehow he gives him yeah. the powers of the Midnight Man for he can go head to head uh, versus a Mark Spector. But again, we'll see. Because yeah. uh, I don't think uh, Arthur, I don't know if I want to see Arthur or Ethan Hawke, like, I'm not saying he can't fight, but I don't know if that like I think he's more of a mental mind yeah. villain versus like yeah. a hand to hand combat. So I would think Midnight Man would be that that brute force if we you know compare it to Stephen and, and uh, Mark. You know this would be uh, Ethan Hawke's character would be the brains, and you have the Midnight Man doing the fights. But I don't know. We'll yeah. see if they if they bring that character back. I really hope so because I think it's a cool mm -hmm. character to explore, uh, yeah. especially visually comparing that you know suit wise. I will even yeah, talk about how crazy this suit. I would love to see yeah, how they would so bring cool. a suit like that to life and those two suits clashing 
seem to be pretty cool to see. So we'll see. Let us know in the comments how, how you all feel about that situation uh, and, of course, your thoughts on the episode thus far. But wrapping it all up, we see now, again, going back to the conversation about the humane, the more human side, this is where Mark and, and, and uh, Lila have a bit of a, a conflict in regards to I, I feel like I don't really know you. Every time I talk to you now, it seems like I'm learning something new about you. And he tells her, Chris, you don't know me, you know, and kind of, yeah. again, reinforces yeah. he wants to separate himself from this relationship for the better. Your thoughts on anything else in this scene that you took away from uh, him just really trying to push her away as far from the situation as possible? Yeah, I like the scene as far as like a understanding the, the, the relationship a lot, a lot more. Um, I thought it was kind of separately. I thought it was crazy how she had to like convince him to bring Steven. And I'm like, you obviously need him. Like need him. Yeah. Yeah. Just and you know that you're like stronger than him. So like, yeah, I was kind of annoyed because even back at the pyramids, he was like, no, 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 I'm not going to use Steven. I'm like, what? Who else are you going <laughs> to use? So it was kind of annoying that he had to like be so convinced. Then I'm like, why do you have to break off the rear view mirror? Like, don't you need that? Like, can't you just talk to it in the with it not broken off? But um, yeah, that's how I felt about the scene. Amanda, your thoughts on this relationship, him trying to push himself away. And uh, I think to Chris's point, um, as far as the him not taking on the persona, Steve, I think he just doesn't want Kanju to think he's weak. He can figure it out. He made this deal with Kanju, not Steven. So I think in a weird way, he might be protecting Steven more so than just like, I don't want you to be in control. Like, I'm actually trying to keep you safe, keep her yeah. safe. What do you think about all that? I think Mark is taking on way too much. And I completely agree with what you both said. Um, you kind of see how Mark is very protective and he's not that much of like a bad guy as they're kind of making it seem like he's more of the badass. He doesn't care, but like he actually cares a lot. And yeah. you can see that with Steven and Layla. Um, I really like this scene because Steven's also talking to him and it's a whole yeah. thing. And I just yeah. love the use of mirrors throughout the past so three episodes. Like, it's just so good and so different. And I love that. Um, but yeah, I think that he's like very overprotective and loving. He just has to keep that um, hard, hard persona, I guess, um, yeah. on at the front for Conchu and, and to see that like he's kept to, like he's keeping everything together. He's holding it together no matter how much like stuff is being thrown at him. So it's a very challenging time for Mark Spector, but he's doing the best that he can. Yeah, he definitely try. He got like you said, man. He definitely has a lot on his plate and trying to, yeah. you know, he's a he's the he's the hero. He's the mercenary. He's always the hero in his eyes. He's always the guy getting stuff done. So it is, uh, you know, some uh, literally internal conflict with him and the other personality and him and his wife and him and Kanju yeah. and the secrets that we think that he might be hiding from her uh, regarding her father. So there's just a lot more to explore with that character. And like you said, and uh, like Kevin said, the the, the use of mirrors, uh, some of the best use of mirrors i've seen in, in media in recent memory in regards how they use that and, and and how they obviously are able to communicate but getting back into steven being the hero uh in his own moment all right i'll give you control and obviously and, and again not to undermine the performance of literally seeing him in a drop of a dime go from mark specter you know cool calm collective superhero to all right great all right it's like this mm -hmm. the, the switch is just so incredible to see but yeah. taking it to you first amanda visually stunning cinematography cinematic moment here and it was just so gorgeous to look at especially at night when i was watching it we mm -hmm. see all right tell tell him to summon me or to imprison me of, of what he's about to do now which I, if i'm steven and if i'm mark mm -hmm. two they're probably like oh, we're we gonna keep you prison you you uh, <laughs> yeah but exactly they, they need kanju because without kanju there's no moon knight there's no suit okay. there's no power so they they definitely exactly. need him to save the world if that's what we're looking at here but your thoughts amanda on this scene on the visuals and then you know kind of wrapping up with uh ethan hawk saying that he this is for all the torment you gave me as we wrap up with kanju being imprisoned yeah, I mean, I, I feel like it ended on a high note. I feel like it's just, they keep surprising us in this season with these episodes and like how the shots are different or how the cinematography is different. And this scene in particular, it was just like really beautiful to look at, as you said. But it's also like the connection between now, like Steven 
and Khonshu. I thought that was really important to show as well because they're there. Um, and he wasn't useless. Yeah, he proved himself in front exactly. of Khonshu. Yeah. yeah. Which is awesome. And they, that also like helps Mark out at the same time. So I think that mm -hmm. that was really beneficial to all three of them working together. Yep. Um, but yeah, I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was effective in what they had to do. And yeah. again, like the special effects, cinematography, sound, everything just at the end of this, just it gave me like, I don't know. I had like chills kind of because I'm like, this is how like things are supposed to happen. It's supposed to come together and look that way. So I think yeah. that it hit. So that, I it, poof, that. it definitely hit. And then your thoughts too, in a minute on, on seeing uh, Arthur getting his kind of revenge moment on Kanju saying that this is for all the torment you caused me these years and, and gets his, you know, he feels empowered. I he's the villain. He's, he's that's the it. Villain. Like he's the yeah. villain. And like the more like it's slowly creeping out. And I like that too. Like it's not like like full in your face type of thing that he's gonna be evil. Like you, yeah. you kind of get to like him in the first episode. Like he's yeah. gonna help him out. And you know, so you get that feeling and then just builds, you're like, oh damn, it's getting worse. And, and it might be because it's Ethan Hawk being in the role, but for a split second there, I might be crazy for saying this, but there is some truth in what Arthur's saying in regard to we as the uh, I don't want to say abuse, but from what we've seen, Kanju, how he treats Mark is oh you think this is your body? Like there is a level of like if I am Arthur in, in this mindset, yeah. he does probably do feel like you, you kind of feel like yeah he, this is a moment that he deserves because Kanju is not like this yeah. perfect human being or God that yes, wants yeah. uh, good deeds. So there is a moment of like he gets a moment to have a shine. You can kind of understand that. But Chris, yeah. your thoughts on again just the wrapping up and seeing that beautiful scene of the stars or as brandon puts it you know the swerving the swagging of the stars being moved around the world there to uh ultimately getting imprisoned mark uh steven passing out and, and like amanda said seeing uh steven being useful once everyone figures out mark steven and kanju if they all work together they can get stuff done but your thoughts and all that and again did you have a moment of like uh, i guess that's a win for arthur with the empowerment moment yeah I thought it was a really cool scene. So like echoing everything that Amanda said, like this, like the, just the visuals look dope. Um, I love things, everything about ancient Egypt in history and real life. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was always excited to see the, you know, how this show did it. I loved how they, the last episode ended when he woke up and just saw that, just a view of, of the, of the great pyramids. So it was just a cool way to end it from like that, the, the end of the episode last time was like with like daybreak. And then with this one, like literally being like moon night over Egypt over Cairo, more yeah. specifically, uh, I thought it was dope. I don't know what to think of like how like what what how they're going to get out of this little pickle. Um, that's what the point of the show. A little like, nice little cliffhanger for next week. Yeah, I mean, again, they he needs Kanju. He needs his avatars, you know, yeah. or his avatar needs him to get back because again, without this protection, there's really what what else does he have besides his wits and obviously his hand hand combat. But if he gets shot or if he gets stabbed again. It's a done deal. So there's no definitely going to have to be no more healing, man. So there's definitely going to have to be some working of the minds, working together to uh, figure this out. Because without, it's very fascinating to see how all this ties up. So without giving too much away, uh, Amanda, because you know we we've, we've seen episode four, but any um, I don't want to say predictions because you obviously seen it, but like any anything you want to say to the people in regards to uh, what they can maybe expect in episode four. Uh, you know, she can, she can handle this with no spoilers. I know she, she got can. it. I, I trust her. I know Amanda can. It's oh god. It's more okay. There are more horror elements, which I really enjoyed. I agree. They yep. really upon that. Um, I love the um the Indiana Jones vibes. I feel like it's more mm -hmm. of an adventure type, as you said. In this case, yeah. more is uncovered. <laughs> Um, you get to dive into Arthur Harrow a bit more, which is also important, and you get to see a different side of Mark Spector. Mm -hmm. So, well said. Um, well said. Yeah. yeah, right. I think I there got it. Go. I, I did it. Chris, yeah. is there anything, any predictions or any rebuttal, anything that you have uh, compared to what Amanda said and what you hope to see in episode four? Which I, I know you saw online, Chris, when all the critics saw it and they said, oh, episode four is just going to melt your mind. Uh, what are you hoping to see next week, my friend? I'm hoping my mind melts. I don't <laughs> I don't think that it will, but I, I'm excited to see episode four because. It's always interesting if Disney is, is giving, you know, content creators press for episodes like, you know, like what, how they choose. Which that is, by the way, not to cut you off, I thought that was insane yeah. that they gave four episodes. That was like, that was crazy to me. Especially out of six. It's crazy. 
So yeah. then, then I'm kind of like, I don't, want, I don't want to skip and then be like really excited for five and six. But that's what we do as humans. We just want the next, next thing. So yeah, yeah I'm excited to see. And I really want, you know, I guess I, I'm certain they're going to explore this Jake angle more, but that's what I'm looking to see. And you brought up the, the posters earlier in the in the stream, E, because um, I, I didn't even put it together before the show started that Mr. Knight was a different person from Moon Knight and all that kind of stuff. So just having that kind of like in the back pocket is, is dope. Yeah, it's uh, and, and to to back up what Amanda said, I definitely think people should be excited for a little bit more of a horror uh, vibes in the episode mm -hmm. um, and just having a, a really interesting time. And yeah, I think to, to, to the mind blowing part, Chris, I think there will be a lot of people that will be looking at themselves like what now? Okay, nice. Okay. Yeah. Now I'll just kind of yeah. leave it at that. So <laughs> very excited to obviously talk more about it. I'm going to read the um, a little behind the scenes. So Marvel, I don't know if you got it too, Amanda. They sent out like they redid the the links of the first four. Did you get a chance to catch that window of time? No, they didn't send it to me, unfortunately. And I needed a refresher, gotcha. which is yeah. like, ah, but you know what? Four really stuck in my mind. So it's yeah. not like yeah. too bad. So yeah, I'm going to have yeah. to, uh, they did, I think it was last week and I think it's Lucky. to like next week or something but anyway yeah i'm excited to revisit it uh and talk about it because i'm really especially chris i'm really excited for you to see it man and obviously yeah. everyone at home watching yep. this now live it's uh it's gonna be a great discussion next week you're definitely gonna want to tune in uh, i don't know maybe we'll bring in a guest maybe we'll get our oscar isaac himself on the stream to get his time no, that would be bring steven awesome yeah bring Please. steven and maybe mark yeah, and uh yeah. get you know arthur Please. in the mix maybe some guys mm -hmm. i can get some guys on the show i'm also yeah. interested uh <laughs> if if actual people from from the uk hate his accent because me as an american i'm like oh wow it sounds so good but i wonder if they're they're like oh it's <laughs> you know what i mean like if they hate it you know it's been an interesting conversation but i i thought intentionally the accent's supposed to be bad because he's putting on an accent right that's how i always mm -hmm. interpreted it like he's not british so he's like yeah faking to be so i always took it as like him pretending to be british or having that accent but i, don't I know. feel that people always find something that's a you know nitpick on but i think oscar mm -hmm. is doing a great job but I very very too. excited to talk episode four with you all before we head out to see if there's any final comments uh again everyone watched us live uh, even people that's watching, you know, late or where they are, uh, don't watch 3M, got it. Um, <laughs> we appreciate no. you all watching this discussion, throwing in your comments, your theories, your discussions, the super chats we got earlier uh, from Brandon and uh, the Bad Dog Reviews. Really appreciate that. And uh, any final words, Chris, man, where can the people find you? What's next on your channel as far as reviews and uh, all that good stuff, my friend? Yeah, so you guys can find me, of course, at Tate's Tech. Thanks for taking the time to check in and 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 hang with us today on, on uh, Moon Knight Wednesdays. My channel recently today, well, today I updated, uh, uploaded the video for the Ultimatum finale and review. That's up there now. And then look for a quick review of Anatomy of a Scandal that I was talking about earlier in, in, this, in the live, um, that new Netflix show that's coming out on Friday. So look for that on Friday. But most importantly, look for me here next Wednesday. Same time, same place. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And I was trying to um, pull up your uh, your page here. Let me switch it over if we can share the screen. So again, if you guys want to, uh, and definitely not want to, you need to do it because this guy is awesome. <laughs> this content is incredible. But as you guys can see, yeah, he definitely he dropped his new uh, Ultimatum review. Uh, it, it talked about the newest episode and got a lot of great content for you all. So definitely check out Tay's Take. Links in the bio. Check him out on Instagram too. He's always showing all the cool stuff he's into as well as uh, sharing his take on Inst or on Twitter as well. Uh, so definitely check him out, guys. Guys. So, uh, uh, again, always a pleasure to talk with this great individual, Chris, here. But tossing it to you next, Amanda. Uh, where mm -hmm. can the people find you? Where is the uh, the links and all the articles and all the reviews you have lined up for the people at home? Yeah, well, Wednesdays are always fun. They're my favorite. I love it so much. Um, you guys can always follow me over at AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Uh, you can follow. Uh, you can uh, go to my YouTube channel, Candid Cinema, and my website, CandidXCinema.com. Probably gonna have Secrets of Dumbledore review out soon, and uh, I have the unbearable weight of massive talent on top of that oh, dropping. Nice, so nice, nice. I had a lot of fun with that one. I'm gonna probably do a Nicolas Cage marathon very soon, um, and I have a little something I'm working on for the YouTube channel with uh, certain directors. So uh, I'm excited for that too. Yeah, it'll be fun. So come on over. 
There you go, guys. And again, as you can see on the screen, let me bring it back up here. Uh, check out her YouTube channel. Check out her Twitter. Uh, by the way, it says subscribe. I, I'm not logged in. If you guys, I am subscribed. I'm definitely subscribed to Amanda and Chris. So I'm not logged into my Google account. So trust me, I, I'm subscribed to these wonderful content creators. So, uh, but if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Definitely check out Amanda. Check out Chris uh, on their Instagrams or Twitters. I think we talked about it. Have you guys started uh, TikTok yet? Have you guys gotten to the TikTok world? Yeah, it's just challenging for me. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. I just watch so much. I'm just. I, I'm a consumer of TikTok. Same. I love TikTok more than anything. Same. I put the little the Apple the iPhone alerts like there's like you only got a certain amount of limits, and then every day they're like, you have five more minutes. I'm like, no, 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 more time, more time. <laughs> every day, every day. But. Nah, it's it's definitely a, an art for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, Twitter. Instagram, YouTube, check out Amanda and Chris. They are so incredible content creators. You guys will be more than uh, entertained when it comes to watching their content. So there you have it, guys. We'll be back next week talking episode four. Uh, maybe we'll get a Thor Ragnar or Thor Love and Thunder uh, news. Maybe we can talk more about Doctor Strange because it'll be a couple weeks before that's out. Hell, maybe they'll give us just a random trailer for, I don't know, Secret Invasion or something crazy. You know, Marvel mm -hmm. just loves to just drop stuff out of the sky. So for myself, Amanda and Chris, we appreciate you all watching live, for liking, sharing, commenting, throwing in some super chats, what have you. Uh, those watching the replay, I hope you enjoy the stream. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments and, of course, subscribe to our channels. Uh, again, happy Wednesday. We appreciate you all, and we will see you next week talking more Moon Knight. Take care, everybody. Ding, 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 ding.